then in shear force and bending moment so the shear force at any section is the derivative of bending moment with respect to x and the udl the load w is minus dv by dx this value will be zero we need to indicate maxima if this value is zero or either this value is zero so what we conclude the shear force changes the sign the bending moment is either maximum or minimum same conclusion you can draw for loading also if we have the first equation and we separate the variable we will get dm equal to vx multiplied by dx if we draw the shear force on y axis then we apply the concept of area under the diagram this is a shear force v is a function of f of x then area under this diagram represents the change in bending moment area under shear force change in bending moment similarly we can write this equation neglecting sign we have dv equal to w multiplied by dx so this time we'll draw the diagram of load diagram on y axis we have load w x axis so this one is a function of w with respect to x and area under this diagram that is area under load diagram is a change in shear force we draw the diagram from load to shear force to bending moment so we have load diagram we have shear force diagram we have bending moment diagram so every time your value of degree will increase by 1 initially in load diagram is 0 then sfd will become 1 and bending will become 2 so n equal to 0 stands for rectangle so if the load is constant then the shear force will be triangle degree equal to 1 so area of a rectangle is base into height so we have a rectangle here base into height so in general we have area formula is 1 upon n plus 1 into base into height so for triangle if we put n equal to 1 we'll get 1 by 2 bh if we have degree equal to 2 so if we have degree equal to 2 and we are below the triangle that is this area then this area will be 1 by 3 of base into height the remaining area will be 2 by 3 of base into height the distance of centroid you can find out using a quick formula n plus 1 upon n plus 2 multiplied by b these are shortcut formulas normally used for sfd and bmd for location of center of gravity or the center of area is measured from apex that is from this point in a strain energy or impact loading we have a load versus deflection diagram that is p versus delta diagram assuming we have a linear elastic curve so we have a deformation is represented by a straight line and area under this diagram is called as work done so this one is called as work done 1 by 2 p times delta if we draw the stress versus strain diagram on y axis we have a strain stress on x axis we have a strain then we have elastic region and plastic region so this value is called as syt for any stress that is this region is called as area under stress strain diagram up to this region is called as resilience is 1 by 2 stress multiplied by strain and if you consider the syt that is the total area up to syt in a stress strain diagram is called as proof resilience is 1 by 2 syt multiplied by epsilon multiplied by volume and if we do not write volume the same quantity represents the modulus of proof resilience the specific strain energy is the strain energy per unit volume is represented by lowercase u so total strain energy is given as 1 by 2 p multiplied by delta correspondingly we have delta max and this whole area is called as proof resilience it is 1 by 2 p max into delta max is same as 1 by 2 syt multiplied by epsilon multiplied by volume if we replace epsilon by sigma by sigma by e then we have strain energy per unit volume is u equals to sigma square divided by twice e for axial loading the strain energy is given by integral px divided by dx divided by 2 times ax multiplied by ex where px ax ex are the force area and ang modulus at that given section from a to b for constant value of p this equation reduces to p square l by k times a and the value of k is equal to 2 for simple loading and k is equal to 6 when we have a self weight elongation takes place due to self weight the strain energy due to bending is integral mx that is the bending moment at given section x square of it multiplied by dx divided by 2 times e i at the local section x and this value will be m square l divided by 2 times of ei for constant section and if variable use the first formula really for torsion the strain energy is given as integral of tx square multiplied by dx upon 2 times gx multiplied by jx polar moment of inertia and the strain energy then for 
constant value is given as t square l divided by 2 times of gj case of solid shaft the strain energy stored is tau max square divided by 4g multiplied by volume whereas for hollow shaft strain energy is tau max square divided by 4g into 1 plus k square where k is given as di by do Normal, normally to find out deflection we are using castilogino theorem if we know the strain energy then we can find out deflection using castilogino theorem if you partial differentiate u with the load then you get a delta value with the deflection and if you partial differentiate with respect to moment you will get theta that is the slope of elastic curve number of times we have a problem of spring collision of a wagon then we have work done is same as kinetic energy change in kinetic is same as change in potential is same as the energy u we have a impact loading or impact factor it is given as 1 plus under root of 1 plus 2h divided by delta static using impact factor you can find out relation between the deformation due to impact so deformation due to impact is equal to delta static into impact factor so we have a rod here which is fixed at the top end we have a collar at the rigid end at the bottom end and we have a sliding piston here or a load here this side equal to h so similarly we have sigma impact is same as sigma static multiplying by impact factor sigma static you can find out using w divided by area of the rod and delta static you can find out using wl divided by ae where l is the length of the rod so in this fashion we can calculate delta impact and the sigma impact